actually go and check some of those channels that um doing original content like Bora City magazine. Like I really like to check what they're doing in general. Like how they can actually do it. This is cool. This is cool to watch. I'm not a late show host person, but I am definitely a BTS person. So I thought it could be fun to judge these late night show hosts only by their interactions with BTS. I don't really know much about them outside of these interactions, so this won't be a fair ranking. This is just for fun. Explain what hooked up means. Come on. Not a late night show host, but I want to put Ellen as an honorable mention for last place because she made weird questions and prioritized her jokes instead of making BTS comfortable. That's who Ellen is. So if you know Ellen DeGeneres, uh, she is doing this to everybody. Uh, I'm just like, Ellen is weird. Ellen is doing a lot of uh, dumb thing with, with the people that are around her. Yeah. The guys didn't go back to her show for a reason, and that's all I'm going to say. BTS is very, very popular, and we want to have some fun with that. In the actual last place is Jimmy Kimmel. When BTS went to his show in 2017, there wasn't any direct interaction. They only had a mini concert outside the studio. Now, I don't really know Jimmy Kimmel, but judging him only by his interactions with BTS, I can say I don't like him. First, I didn't love that prank he made where he had the mothers of fans meet BTS. It could have been a harmless prank, but Jimmy kept asking if they were jealous of their mothers. Wait till you find out how mad the daughters were. If they smell them to see if they smell like BTS. And are you smelling her to see if they rubbed any BTS? <laughs> and kept mentioning how unlucky their daughters are compared to their mothers. You're almost as lucky as your daughter is unlucky for not meeting them. When he put them in that situation in the first place. And of course, the dumb jokes. First, Okay, that's Jimmy Kimmel as well, so that's normal. I mean, like you should you should know these people and things they're doing. They're not gonna he change their army being so strategy. excited they will kill BTS if they go outside. We were gonna send the band outside to the audience, but at least a hundred people would be killed if we did that. So then he makes fun of their name by saying it sounds like BTO. When I was a kid, we had BTO. It was a different thing. And the disease IBS. And it's nothing like IBS, right? It's a medical condition. And then in 2021, he made a whole joke about how boy bands in general were like the coronavirus that mutates with time and that BTS was the last and worst mutation. And it popped up all over the world until eventually we get to one that's so contagious it destroys all life on earth. So weird. And I feel like the guys maybe were uncomfortable since 2017 because they didn't go back to the show ever since. <laughs> Scout in Korea. So that's what that is. Yeah. I'm no wiser. <laughs> Number five is Graham Norton from the UK. BTS said that their experience there wasn't the best because Jungkook couldn't dance because of an injury in his foot. Stitches in my hair. Stitches. And Jimmy couldn't be there at all because he was sick. You got seized up before the rehearsal so. so they were down to five however this is not graham norton's fault he was actually not that bad but he's number five because i didn't see much effort to connect with the members you can't be jimin today hey, he's got angry <laughs> i'm scared no jimin the other celebrities went along with the jokes more than the host because yeah. that mean you're looking for a new member. But he was okay. He kept mentioning that he couldn't believe their impact. I don't mean any disrespect, but there are people of a certain age who don't know BTS. So just in case you are thinking I'm making this up. But was respectful in general. So that's that. Please welcome BTS! The first time BTS went to the James Corden show was in 2017. And here James said... Here we are. Absolutely love you at this show. Which is funny because that was the first time they were on the show, but whatever. What do I know? It was just a generic thing to say, I guess. At the show, what I remember thinking was that James seemed very charismatic and nice. And I like how he started this tradition. In this same episode, they play flinch and it was a very fun game. I remember thinking that the way he laughed was so funny. <laughs> and I liked that he high-fived them. And if they said something, he would play along and continue with the interaction, even if they were accidentally interrupting him. So, 
I gotta say, James. Go on. He always brought the attention back to them. They also sang DNA and James tweeted about it in his personal account. There are no official videos from their participation in 2018, but they were only welcome and sang fake love. The 2020 episode was probably my favorite episode in this show. The introduction was just so funny. Connecting the world that oh sorry, what's Oh really? Oh my god. Seriously? He's fine, he just feels under the weather. No, we can't have we can't just have six of them out here. No, they should just leave and we'll just Thank you. Okay. BTS are on the show! Here they were interviewed for the first time in this show. The guys were great as always and James was okay. I like his questions about what they do when they forget a dance move and there was was pretty much the same. He recognized the support from armies and in the end he accidentally interrupted Jimmy. We love that. What a beautiful message. BTS are performing here. <laughs> but it's okay. He was nice to them. It looked like RM thanked him or said something nice to him because James hugged him. So this was definitely a nice interaction. I love the game of hide and seek with the guys in Ashton Kutcher. When James said, I lost it. I also thought it was cute how he called their hands. And I also noticed that he kept calling Jimmy Jamin. Even though he said Jimin correctly before. So I'm sure he just didn't know their names by then, but it's fine, I guess. Also, Ashton Kutcher was funnier than James, but that's just my opinion. Weeks after, they released the iconic Carpool Karaoke. This was one of the best segments BTS had in a late night show. James let them shine, was nice to them, and always wanted to include the seven of them. Do you know the Friends theme tune? Uh, yeah, of course. Who else in the car? Hang on, who in the car knows the theme tune to Friends? I like that even though he didn't know Korean, he will still sing the English parts of the songs. This video was so iconic that he even got the Papa Mochi nickname. There were the regular jokes that everyone makes. I will quit this job in a heartbeat. <laughs> to join BTS. He let them shine and I like the dancing part. So in general, he was okay. Then during quarantine, the guys had a little one minute interview and performed Boy With Love. But there isn't much to say about James. Later that year, James interviews them about the Grammys and their album B. It was all going well until Jimmy asked. And he said, Are you kidding? I've had dynamite on repeat in my car. Jimmy noticed that he actually didn't. So he said, when you listen, you will know that the album is about the pandemic. But anyways, the last interaction was cute but only because it's Jimin. Then they perform Life Goes On and Dynamite from Korea. Before 2021, everything seemed okay in general. In my opinion, his praises and comments for BTS seemed a little basic and superficial. However, in 2021, he made that dumb joke about BTS speech and performance in the UN assembly. What he said specifically was that world leaders had no choice but to take BTS seriously and that it was a historic moment because 15-year-olds were wishing to be there, meaning that armies are all 15-year-olds girls. Now, what some people don't understand is that we are actually extremely used to these kind of comments and jokes. When this happens, we usually say how boring and repetitive these jokes are and move on. But it was not like that with James Corden for a reason. And it's because he was one of the few who actually treated the guys nicely. He kept repeating how he loves them and he kept inviting them to his show. People excuse this joke by saying that a lot of people write these jokes, not only him. But I personally don't care. It's not about the joke. You can think it was harmless. It's about how he, who happily accepted the crown for the nicest army late show host, ruined this nice relationship with us because of this dumb joke. And maybe if he apologized, things wouldn't have gotten worse, but of course he didn't. A couple of months later, James interviewed them and even though he tried to avoid it, RM ignored his initial basic question and called him out. And I just got to say, the panic in James' eyes is just exquisite. Is his voice trembles and his answer is just so bad. He doesn't apologize, he just laughs about it. Such a relief to get away. He, of course, makes it even worse by playing the victim. Someone's just told me that they hope I die today. Which is ridiculous because number one, this is the internet and everyone receives those comments by trolls. And number two, he doesn't address the real reason why armies are upset. He just keeps joking about it. Arm accepted his non-apology to clear the air. Even though James responds, We appreciate your apology. Ah, it was I also think it's very funny how he asks Am I still Papa Mochi? 
Baby yeah. Mochi, am I still yeah, yeah, you... And nobody answered and he got nervous. The rest of the interview was okay, mainly because of BTS. Later, they performed BTD and there was the weirdest autotune I have ever heard in a BTS performance. I don't want to say they did it on purpose, but it was definitely weird, especially when this has never happened in any other BTS performance. In a positive note, weeks later, the concert in the crosswalk was released and I loved it so much. I love how the language barrier was not an opportunity to put BTS in an uncomfortable position. Instead, they made James the butt of the joke by using that running joke about the guys making fun of James in Korean and him not understanding anything. James was funny, BTS was funny, everything is scripted, but still, it was a nice interaction. And then, the show aired the butter performance. And again, there was something weird with the audio. And if you say I should blame the production and not James, then you are right. But it still doesn't sit right with me, especially when they had weeks to fix it. In general, the guys seemed comfortable with James Corden, which is nice. They forgave him and I always trust BTS first. But personally, after everything that happened, I don't trust or care about James Corden. At least not enough to call him Papa Mochi or whatever he wants to be called. Also, his damn show blocked my last video twice, so I don't like him for that. I decided to take my remuneration in moments with BTS. BTS never actually went to the Trevor Noah's show because I believe the Daily Show is more about news and politics than pop culture, but they had a few interactions when Trevor Noah hosted the Grammys. He was nice in general. The jokes were usually about how big BTS is as a group, and some people found his joke about Squid Games repetitive. ARMS response was perfect. What are we gonna do? So I don't think it's that big of a deal. What gave me a good impression of Trevor Noah was his genuine comments after the Grammys in his own show. He said that BTS were so dedicated and talented and they're so good and efficient at what they do. Like, and he made a joke about BTS being better than the boy bands in his day. I was watching them and I'm not even trying to throw shade or anything but I was like man in sync they got away with shit. <laughs> like, think of like the boy bands I grew up with and it was just like <laughs> It's like, I'm like, damn, it's a... And it was so refreshing to see BTS being part of a joke, but not the subject of the joke, for once. Compare this to Jimmy Kimmel's joke, for example. Both jokes were about boy bands, but Trevor Noah's joke was tasteful and, you know, not racist. We get the one that's so contagious it destroys all life on Earth. As they're known by their nicknames, the cute one, 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 and, uh, uh, I'm sorry, a little help? The cute one! In 2019, The Stephen Colbert Show invited BTS to recreate the historic moment when the Beatles made their US TV debut at the Ed Sullivan Show. Stephen Colbert acted like Ed Sullivan and BTS resembled the Beatles. Apart from this sketch, they performed Boy With Love, had an interview and performed Make It Right. During the interview, Stephen introduces them as his close personal friends. Please welcome my close personal friends, BTS. And then RM does this. In general, Steven seems more respectful and nice than funny, but he has some good moments. <laughs> then in 2021, BTS made a hand gesture sketch and performed Butter. Even though the sketch was completely in English and I prefer the sketches where they can comfortably talk in Korean, it was not bad at all. Steven and BTS did not have any direct interaction, but Steven's introduction did not include any bad jokes and that is the main reason why he's so high in this list. He hasn't said anything wrong, he's always been respectful and he gave them the opportunity to have a very nice sketch in 2019. I really want the guys to be back in this show in person. Number one is Jimmy Fallon. In 2018, BTS were invited to the Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon. Here, they sang Idol and I'm Fine and were interviewed. Well, Jimmy is really popular. Jimmy was wearing and the he has Jimmy a very good personality. and an army bomb ring and joked about not picking favorites. Not picking favorites! I'm not picking favorites! But still choosing Jimmy. It was funny and cute and it looked like the guys were very comfortable talking to him. They also had a segment where they danced Fortnite dances, which was one of the smartest decisions in these shows because it would have been a little difficult for them to have a whole acting sketch in English, so a dancing challenge was easier for them because they are dancers. In 2020, BTS were invited to an special New York episode. First, they were interviewed in the New York City subway. I like that Jimmy's questions here were deeper than in other regular late 
late night shows and I like that he always had something to say about their answers. He continued the conversation at all times, even helping them with their answers. And then I thought, what do you think of it? He was amazing. Unlike other interviews, Jimmy seemed genuinely interested and nice. They also had the Subway Olympics where they played a bunch of silly games and we got so many epic moments. <laughs> Then they went to an iconic restaurant called Cat's Deli where they ate some sandwiches and then served these sandwiches. My favorite part was when the guys couldn't believe the size of the sandwiches and were asking for veggies. But no veggies? Uh no veggies. Okay. No, are you kidding me? No. Finally, the boys performed the best performance the show has ever seen. During quarantine, there was the BTS week, where the guys performed the five days of the week and were interviewed about performing at the Grammys, Dynamite getting them their first number one, their seventh anniversary, quarantine, their movie Break the Silence, the album B, their New York special, their charity work, their high school experience, and advice for young people pursuing an artistic career. As always, Jimmy seemed genuinely interested and gave meaningful comments. Compliments. These guys are working hard. It was so impressive from working with you and, and seeing you work. Is, you have great work ethic. Uh, you really are professional, but you're also very funny. You have a... All right. Um, I say this. Uh, clicked on I'm not a lady. But it wasn't that good. It was... Uh, there, there are things that was a little bit wrong with the whole thing. So the f the very first thing like it's just like you can't really judge these people based on what they did to BTS because they do these things to everybody. Okay, like like if you know these people, if you just watch their shows, it's just like all right. J I mean, like when you say Jimmy Fallon is the best and Ellen DeGeneres is the worst, in real life it's the same. Like <laughs> everybody li love Jimmy Fallon. Uh, Jimmy Kimmel is less likable than Jimmy Fallon and Ellen is the weird one so I mean like I I used to watch some of their shows because I was uh, watching interviews with other people and, and I wanted to find those people's personalities so what we had in here it was a little bit off topic and beside that that sound that that, that audio that goes on and on and on from so 16 minutes where we're listening to one very uh, narrow music it bothers my ears as well so it's too long it's too long some of those explanations were too long if this video were six minutes and 20 it it could go like one million and eight eighty nine hundred thousand views but because it's too long it only gets 189k Yeah, from ARMY POV, I'm just like, I consider myself ARMY. I believe the ratings were 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 accurate. Yes, I believe. It was, I'm just like, in real life, it was okay. I mean, like, I, I can. I'm just like, if, if you just give me those people, I will put them in the same order. That I like Jimmy Fallon the most. I like um, Stephen Colbert next. Like, I, I really get the idea, but it was boring because of the music and because of the length, which was so long it could be a lot more shorter at least half of the length and the music should go a little bit different I, ju I just don't like the music you know it's it's the same all the time 16 minutes listening i'm just like i cannot even listen to to that song for 16 straight minutes but yeah i i'm just like now i'm just i'm, I'm not judging the video i'm judging the story behind it <laughs> yeah yeah, it's like um, this video had the potential to go one million and eighty nine hundred thousand views, but it only got one hundred and eighty nine eighty nine thousand Be because of these problems. Like music is too boring, the length is too long. But the story was okay. Like it was okay, it was okay. But I get the idea that what 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 kind of what kind of you know original content can be good here.